Hello and welcome to the next episode of Physiology with Shakti and you are watching series on ECG. So in today's episode we are going to deal with ECG proper and we are going to see what are the different leads how they come to be uh, what do they denote and we'll come to understand how the waveforms in the ecg are actually happening so if you haven't already seen the previous episode uh, please you go ahead and check it out and if nothing at least go out and uh, check out the last part i think from 31 minutes or so about the part uh, where conduction through the heart is explained so i would recommend at least that before this episode so that you have a thorough understanding and it will help you to understand few things that are explained in this episode okay now that we come to understand a few things about the pacemaker potential the action potential as well as how the conduction of impulses happen in the heart right now we'll come to ecg proper right so for ecg first you need to understand some basics about the uh, leads right so what is a lead lead consists of two electrodes right you take two electrodes connect them with the help of a wire and attach it to a measuring device like a galvanometer that forms a lead right so two electrodes which are connected by a wire to measuring device like the galvanometer right so this forms a lead now different types of lead are there like the bipolar lead the unipolar lead right so difference is based on the active electrodes that are present right so what we can do is we can take two active electrodes active in the sense they are polarized so one positive electrode and one negative electrode so once we take two electrodes both are polarized one active one uh, active positive the other active negative so once we do that we connect it with the wire and uh, measure it with the galvanometer what we are doing is we are measuring the potential difference across the right so between them the potential difference between the positive and the negative terminals are measured that is one way that is a bipolar so bipolar two active electrodes are there right the next scenario is uh, using a unipolar lead so for a unipolar lead we take only one active electrode and we put another inactive electrode how do you make it inactive right so we try to create a zero potential over here how do you do that we pass uh, terminals through uh, resistance right so in this example for example we use a 5000 ohms resistant and based on that we create a near zero potential right near zero potential and you take another active electrode so we take a positive active electrode we keep a reference electrode over here and the potential at the active electrode in reference to the inactive electrode that is measured in a unipolar lead all right so although it is unipolar we say it is unipolar it you have to understand that it's not clearly completely unipolar because it's very difficult to create a absolute zero potential so some amount of potential will be there so you can't exactly call it like a unipolar per se unless you create a zero potential but Uh, for experimental purpose this will do right okay so now that you understood what a unipolar lead is what a bipolar lead is we'll take a look at how it was done historically so einstein was the first one who had uh, discovered uh, and brought about the process of ecg right so what he used were bipolar limb leads bipolar limb leads right so he used lead 1 lead 2 lead 3 what did he do okay. so to understand that just take a look over here all right so what he did was he placed an electrode um over here over here and over here right so now you know that your body fluid the volume conductor right it can conduct the electrical activity through it 
right? So in effect, what this is measuring would be this. You get that? So these potentials, so if the heart is present over here, right? And with respect to this heart, the potentials are recorded like this, right? Okay. And what is happening is this potential will be taken here, this potential will be taken here, this potential will be taken here. So we use your left hand, right hand, left leg, right? So these are where the electrodes are placed. Okay. So this finally gives rise to what is called the Eindhoven's triangle. All right. So now we'll take a zoomed in view of only the Eindhoven triangle so that you understand it properly. So just keep in mind, this is how we keep everything together. Okay. So this is the left leg. This is the left arm, this is the right arm, right? So these are the electrodes that have been placed. So any lead, there's two electrode attached to a wire, attached to a galvanometer, right? So when we take lead one, right? That is connection between the right and the left arm. Lead two would be a connection between the right arm and the left leg and Lead 3 would be left arm and left leg. Okay, so now if you remember earlier that diagram I had drawn where I had explained the conduction of impulses. If you looked at those impulses, the majority of those impulses would be towards this direction, towards the apex. Right? So over here, that direction would come like this. If something moves towards a positive terminal, that is a positive deflection, right? If it moves away from the positive terminal, it is a negative deflection, right? So in order to get that, we need the positive terminals always towards whichever direction it is going. Okay. So when we talk about lead uh, two and three, it will be fairly easier to understand, right? So if you're connecting these two together, this is lead two. If you're going to connect these two together, you tell me which should be the positive terminal because the impulses are going generally in this direction you would want this to be the positive terminal so we keep this as a positive terminal here and this as a negative terminal when we are doing lead 2 right so this is lead 2 right so this lead 2 would have a general vector direction of 60 degree right okay what about lead 3? If you are connecting the left arm and the left leg. Okay. Again, you tell me which direction should be the positive terminal because majority impulses are going down. Right? So this would be again the positive terminal over here. And this the negative terminal. Right? So this is lead 3. Right? And this lead 3 will be generally like this. So if this is 60, this will be 120 degree. Right? So now we're left with your lead one. Right? So in lead one, you cannot, if you connect them, you cannot actually say whether it's going down or up. Right? What you can say is whether it's towards the left or the right. Right? Okay. So generally when it goes in that this direction. Where is the impulse going towards? It's going towards the left side, right? We need to record the left toward activity more, right? So over here, the terminals, which should be the positive, this would be the positive, and this would be the negative, right? So I had a lot of students get confused about which is the positive terminal, which is the negative terminal. All you have to think about is the general direction of your cardiac impulses. Right? So once that is clear, you can easily make out, right? When you're connecting these two, that is lead one, that will be positive and this will be negative. When you're connecting 
this to your leg that is lead 3 right so again because of majority impulses are going down this is positive this is negative right when you're connecting these two again impulses are going here we want this to be positive we want this to be negative right so this is lead 1 which is 0 degree you understood right so what this means is that in this direction right zero degree this is the start of the circle zero degree right and that is lead one right this is 60 degree right and that 60 degree is denoted by lead two next we'll go another 60 degree 120 degree that will be your lead three right okay so these are bipolar limb leads because there is a positive as well as a negative terminal because there is a positive terminal as well as a negative terminal we measure the potential difference between them and that is why it is bipolar limb leads right so these are three leads which were used by Enro right okay. so next is unipolar leads right so when you talk about unipolar leads they can be unipolar chest leads as well as unipolar limb leads so earlier it was bipolar limb leads now we're talking about unipolar limb leads as well as unipolar chest leads the precordial leads right so how is that different from it there is basically a inactive terminal right an inactive electrode is there and we measure the active terminal potential with respect to the inactive terminal right so how are you going to create this near zero potential in the inactive terminal right so that is what wilson had done he created a wilson central terminal initially so what he did was he put all these electrodes right so he put all these electrodes connected these electrodes to each other and created a central point in the incurvent triangle yeah and that would uh, pretty much uh, denote the center part of the heart right so he connected this electrode he connected this electrode he connected this electrode and remember we need a zero potential or near zero potential so what do you do we put a high resistance over there so we put a high resistance a 5000 ohm resistance connected from the right arm we put another resistance connected from the left arm we put another resistance connected from the left leg right so these are 5000 ohm resistance right and this central point is what is called the Wilson's central terminal right okay so what we're doing here is with respect to this central terminal we are measuring an active electrode so here this was an active electrode here this is also an active electrode here this is also an active electrode right so when we are measuring these it's not between them it's not between these two different active electrodes that we're measuring anything what we're measuring is with respect to this newly created almost zero potential that is the cells central terminal we are measuring how much is the potential at the active terminal right so how will the measurement be with respect to this this is what we measure right so this is the left arm so we call it v n right and this is if this is zero before that this can be minus 30 this minus 30 degree is v l all right now with respect to the central terminal we are measuring the right arm so that right so because it was the right arm this is now vr right so if you are measuring it from here 0 it is minus 150 right or you can see if you are taking it from here it is plus 210 either it's minus 150 or plus 210 right so that is your vr next up from the wilson's terminal 
we are measuring towards the left leg right right so that we take it as foot because vl is already taken you can take l for leg so we take it as foot so we take this as vf and this is directly 90 degree right so this is what wilson had done so interval had initially taken your taken your yes so he had initially taken the bipolar limb leads and after that what wilson had done was he took a zero potential central terminal and measured vl vf vm okay so now there was a problem with this uh, if you seen the diagrams earlier diagrams of ecg especially in uh, in gang's textbook there's one diagram and you can see how the lines are very thick right so one problem like that was occurring over there and the potentials were not high enough when we take the vr vl pf right one of the reason for that was let's just say left arm right when we are measuring left arm we are taking this as a active potential right active electrode and measuring it with respect to the central terminal but how was the central terminal created central terminal was created with the left leg with the right arm and also the left thumb so basically we took this as a active electrode and we took that also along with the resistance see what happened here so we are taking this as an active electrode we are also taking that in the wilson central terminal so that was one of the issue with this wilson central terminal right so how did we get over this we formed augmented limb leads so these are unipolar leads which have been slightly augmented around 50 percentage increase augmentation was done and how was this augmentation done that was with the help of goldberg's terminal right goldberg created a separate set of central terminal right so because it's getting too crowded over here uh, i'll just rub this off and we'll do it again from scratch so what goldberg did was with respect to this he had taken electrodes to create the zero potential right so if you are measuring the left term as i had explained earlier in order to measure that the problem was we had taken that along with it so now we are no longer taking that all right we are no longer taking that instead we are taking it only from the opposite the right term and the left leg right so now in order to create this we put resistance lead resistance lead so this is a goldberg central terminal so now a central terminal is created without the left arm right without the left arm and now we take this electrode and with respect to the goldberg central terminal we are taking this right so this is again same from here is going in this direction so it is minus 30 degree itself so that is in changing but what happened is that the impulses are more augmented right so these are called augmented limb leads so we call it a v left arm right so we call it a v l that a v l is minus 30 degree right and here's the thing about goldberg central terminal in wilson central terminal it is always the same there is only one central terminal right here the nature of the central terminal changes based on which electrode we are taking now say if i am taking the left leg right so this will be the active electrode so this will no longer be present in the central terminal right so now if we are taking the left leg what we are going to do is we are instead now going to take resistance from here and here we are no longer taking this right so we are no, no longer taking that so now the goldberg central terminal is only based on the right arm and the left arm and now we are measuring it with respect to your leg lead 
right for this electrode over here so now this is 90 degree earlier it was vf now we see that because this is not included it becomes a v s the same thing is done with right arm when we take right arm as a active electrode we make sure that this is no longer present we take only these two and then with respect to that we take this right so here in goldberg central terminal it kind of changes right based on what you take as an active electrode it kind of changes right so now we got uh, three bipolar limb leads we got three unipolar augmented limb leads right there's no uh, sense taking actually both the uh, vr as well as the avl avr right because it's the same thing and avl is better because it's more augmented so we are kind of discarding the vr part right we are taking only the augmented limb leads so basically now we have six leads now you know that your uh, ecg generally has around 12 uh, leads that are present right so when we come to this what you can see here is this is the zero degree right this is a lead two which is 60 degree this is a lead three which is 120 degree right this is avf 90 degree avl minus 30 degree this is minus 150 degree which is a v r right so we got a b r we got a b l we got lead one we got lead two we got lead three so if you take this vector axis what do you understand with respect to the heart these are like a clockwise position in this plane right zero degree right 60 degree 90 degree 120 degree minus 150 degree and minus 30 degree right so these leads denote these these directions in this one particular plane so think of a clock and that vertical plane of the clock so these leads are denoting electrical activities in that plane so basically whether it is up whether it's down whether it is up right right down left right that kind of thing can be denoted with help of these leads now what is missing over here right so when you take a heart it is not two dimensional it is a three dimensional model so there will be impulses in this direction this direction this direction goes like this right so we need something that measures these directions as well so what do you use for that that is where the next set of unipolar leads come so they are no longer limb leads right we already done bipolar as well as the unipolar limb leads next up is the chest leads they are also unipolar right so what we do is we take the wilson central terminal just like before right so we take the wilson central terminal which denotes like the center of the heart and after that with respect to that we take an active electrode in front of the chest just take a look over here right you see v1 v2 v3 v4 v5 v6 v7 v8 v9 right v9 can go all the way to the back so normally we don't need the posterior ones what we usually use is still uh, v6 right so v5 v6 right and we stop there so these are the six extra electrodes so the six plus six now becomes 12 electrodes that are there present so what we understood here is there is a Wilson central terminal with respect to the Wilson central terminal we are taking different points here like this the chest four right so how do you find these points so we take the sternal angle that is second rib second intercostal space go down third fourth so in the fourth intercostal space right on the right side the right sternal border that is where you keep v1 you do the same thing on the left side now right left sternal border we have your v2 right forget about v3 for now 
Next is the mid clavicular line. Next in the V5. Sorry, the fifth intercostal space. Right? So in the mid clavicular line, in the fifth intercostal space, that is where you take the next one. Right? That is V4. And between V2 and V4, you put the V3. Right? So we got V1, we got V2, we got V3 as well as V4. That is mid clavicular line. Next up is the anterior axillary line. Right? So in the fifth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line, that is V5 and in the that is the anterior axillary. Now the mid axillary line that will be V6 in the fifth intercostal space. Right? So beyond that, you can also take the posterior axillary line, right? The scapula border, right? The near the vertebral edge behind. So all these can also be taken. They form the next leads. So normally we don't use that, we use only the leads till V6. Right? So you understood what is happening. So first plane is this plane, like a clock. Right? And the next plane is measuring the horizontal activity in this plane. Right? Whether it's anterior, whether it's left side anterior, like this. So basically now we have a three-dimensional model where we are measuring impulses in vertical as well as the horizontal plane. Understood that? Right. So now that you understood all these, we'll come to understand how these uh, leads are actually recording what we finally see as these curves in ECG. Alright? Okay. So again, we come back to that earlier yeah. diagram of the heart. Right? So now we'll try to imagine these leads with respect to the heart. Right? So we take lead 1, which is like this, right? Lead two would be in this direction, right? So generally, if we take lead one, the directionality would be zero degree, right? Lead two, 60 degree, right? Lead three would be one, 20 degree, right? Next up is AVL, that would be minus 30 degree, then AVF would be 90 degree, then AVR would be minus 150 degree, right? So this would be lead 1, lead 2, lead 3, this would be AVL, this would be A V. F, this would be A, V, R. Right? So we got all these six leads. Right? Now, if you remember, the heart impulses. Where does it start from? It starts from the SC node. Right? This is our A, V node. So from the SA node, it is going to go towards the A, V node. Alright? So this is the general directionality. Right? So let's take lead 2 for example. That is the most common lead that we look at. Right? Where the ECG would be given the best. Why is that? Because if you remember, the general directionality of the conducting impulses are towards lead 2. So that is why we often look at lead 2 for most of the things. Right? Because that best represents this general cardiac direction. Right? Initially there is depolarization of the atria. Right? So this atrial depolarization that takes place, right? That would be represented. So because this is the positive terminal, right? So any movement towards the positive terminal would be shown as a positive deflection. Right? So that positive deflection because of this is your P wave. So we get the P wave over here. And that is because of this. Now after that, due to the AV node, there's an AV node will delay, right? Time for conduction through the AV node, right? So at that time, there is no muscles that are polarized, right? No other tissue that is polarized. That will be an isoelectric line, all right? And after that, next thing that happens is 
septal activation. So initially left part of the left part of the septum gets activated, then the left to right activation takes place. The left to right activation. Now just look at the direction. This is in this direction. This is kind of directly perpendicular to it. Right? So if this uh, recording right done and something uh, perpendicular to it moves, will that be recorded properly? No. Right? So that potential will be very less. Right? That is what is the Q wave. It's hardly there. Even if it's there, it'll be very less. Less than one small box. Right? So that is your Q wave. Right? Now you understand why it is not so visible. Right? And also the septum. How thick is the septum? Right? It's very thin. Right? So unless there is some deformity, where there is a blocking, where it has to now travel longer, that is when Q wave comes. That is in case of infarction and all that. Right? Okay. So that is your Q wave. Next up, it moves towards the apex. This again is in this direction. Right? So that will be a positive negative, positive wave. Right? So that is what we call the R. That R reflection is because of that. Right? So by this time, actually the atria must have repolarized. Repolarization now in the atria must have started going back. Right? So this repolarization that happens must have already gone on. Right? So this general direction of the repolarization is negative. You get that? So because it is negative, it should actually come up as another negative deflection. But that doesn't happen because it gets lost. It gets mixed along with the ventricular depolarization. Because it gets mixed along with the ventricular depolarization, you cannot exactly see it over here. Okay? Right. So after this point, we had seen that it needs to go back. It crawls underneath and it tries to go underneath to the base, the pulmonary corners, the superior part of the septum, right? So the direction kind of changes. It is now going like this towards the base, right? Going towards the base, right? So now it is kind of opposite to this direction and opposite to this direction would mean a negative or a positive way, a negative way. That negative way is what we call the S way. Now this one point over here, right? That is one point where the entire heart has been depolarized. The entire heart is depolarized, right? And will be refractile right now. This is important. This point is called the J point, right? This is one particular point where the heart remains depolarized and it becomes refractile, right? Repolarization has not taken place and for a while it will go on like this. Alright, so the importance of this is usually at this point the entire heart is repolarized, no current is there so nothing can be detected right now. But if there is some injury anywhere, current of injury happens at this time when actually everything should be in a refractive state, right? So that will lead to what we call the ST elevation, ST depression changes in this, right? So that happens in ischemia infarctions, right? Okay. So now that you understood this, right? Next step is repolarization. So repolarization, I told you earlier how it is no longer from the endocardium to epicardium that you would expect. It would be from epicardium to endocardium now. Right? So general directionality of it changed. Now it will start towards the apex. This becomes more positive compared to everything. And it generally goes towards this initially. So that repolarization again will be in this direction. Right? So because of that, the next wave also will be positive wave, which is the P wave. That would indicate your ventricular repolarization, right? So sometimes because of a delayed uh, repolarization of the papillary muscles over here, 
they could be presence of a ua present right so normally this is how ecg is formed right so you understand the different curves you understand what it actually represents the p wave the q the r the s and you understand what the t wave is right now there are isoelectric segments in between them these are isoelectric segments the no electrical activity is present right so these are segments isoelectric segments right if you include a wave along with a segment that becomes an interval so this is a segment where only the isoelectric line is there right we include a wave along with one or two waves right along with an interval uh, the segment that becomes an interval right next year after this we'll go on to see how ecg is the normal recording how fast it is recording what are the divisions right we'll try to understand how to calculate the rate rhythm right the vector axis and all these things right okay. okay so now that we have an idea of what the leads are right now we just need to understand how it is measured and how to look at the ecg right so this ecg is recorded in a paper right the paper is electrocardiogram right so in that paper what happens when it's recording is that the speed is in such a way that it covers 25 mm in 1 second right 25 mm in 1 second right so let's say it started from here this point right it covers 1 2 3 4 5 large boxes it covers five large boxes and each of these large box has five smaller boxes that is what 5 into 5 25 so each of that small box here is 1 mm do so you get what i'm saying right so in the end this 125 cm sorry 25 mm forms One second. All right. Okay. All right. So these are the large boxes, right? So this is totally twenty-five millimeter, and this accounts for one second. All right. Right. And these are further divided into 1 mm divisions so 5 1 mm divisions are there in each of them so as you can see over here this is 1 mm division right such 25 1 mm divisions make up 1 second right so this one division is 0.04 second right five such divisions would make up one large box and that is 0.2 second right and this whole division this would make up 1 second So this is 0.04 second. This is 0.2 second. This is one second. That is the first thing you need to understand, right? The next thing is the amplitude. The amplitude is pretty simple. Each one small division accounts for 0.1 millivolt, right? So one large box would be 0.5, right? And two. large box would make up a 1 millivolt right so before we take the ecg we usually take a calibration and see that uh, the two large boxes would make up 1 millivolt right okay so now that you got this picture we'll try to draw the waves in the ecg so the first wave is the p wave right so initially from the sa node impulses are going to ab node 
and the atria is getting depolarized right so this is the general direction and this is your direction of your lead to so because it is generally moving towards the positive anything more moving towards the positive would be a positive deflection right so the p wave would be a positive deflection over here right so this is something i need you to understand most of these intervals right uh, are going to be 2 to 3 segment small segments right so one small segment is 0.04 second 2 to 3 means 0.08 to 0.12 second right so most of these things are 2 to 3 segments there are exceptions right we'll come to that right so initially when we talk about p wave it is 2 to 3 right i'll take it as 2 for here right so it starts here if i take 2 division it's here right okay how about the amplitude amplitude is also 1 to 3 division so in amplitude 1 to 3 division would be 0.1 to 0.3 right so we'll take an average of 0.15 right so this is 0.1 somewhere here 0.15 So that is your P wave. You get the picture. Two to three division can be longer. Two to three division and amplitude of one to three division. Right? Okay. So after that, now there's something called a AV nodal delay. Right? It's a delay. Atria is already activated. Atrial depolarization is done. Ventricle hasn't started depolarizing yet. It hasn't reached the ventricle. So it gets Stuck in the AV node, right? So that will not be read. It will be an isoelectric line, no electrical potential because no depolarization is taking place, right? So that will be the PQ segment, right? So that can be one to two division again. So ultimately two division. So earlier it was two to three division. Now one to two division, right? So if you take a look at this whole thing, so let's say it ends over here. If you take a look at the whole thing, the PQ interval. So I had told you earlier, this is a segment, only the isoelectric line. Isoelectric line with the wave is the interval, right? This P wave with the PQ segment will be the PQ interval. You see that it is less than one large box. One large box is 0.2, right? So maximum will go to is 0.2. If it is Going beyond that, this whole PQ interval, it means there's a conduction block, right? So this is normally coming to 0.12 to 0.2 second, right? 0.212 will be three divisions, right? So the minimum of two and one would make it 0.12 second, and it can go to a maximum of one large box, right? So this we can quickly. Assess when we look at the ECG, right? If it goes beyond one large box, it means there's a conduction problem. Right? It's taking longer than normal time, and that would happen when there is a block over here between the atria and the ventricle. All right? Okay. So after that, next is your QRS complex. The duration of QRS complex is again two to three divisions, as I had mentioned earlier. This is two to three division. This is one to two division. Next is two to three division, right? Initially, we have the Q wave, which is very small because it's going perpendicular, right? So we'll make a very small Q wave, right? Usually, it'll be less than one millimeter, less than one box, even if it is present. So normally, it can be present, but it'll be very less less than one box, right? Next, there is a R wave, right? So R wave can be like 0.5, 1, 1.5 till 1.5. Now it can go, right? So R wave is because it is going to the ventricle. The depolarization of the ventricle is going towards the apex, and this is going towards the positive direction. So that is positive deflection, right? So I'm just randomly drawing a by amplitude. Okay, and next, what happens is it has to go to the base, right? So it winds around and 
goes towards the base. Right? Now the direction is different. It's no longer towards the positive oblique to. It is moving away from it. Away from it means a negative deflection. So the next wave, which is the S wave, is a negative deflection. You see that? Right. So this whole thing over here in this example, it came to 1, 2, 2 division. Right? Normally it can be 2 to 3 divisions. Right? If you look at the amplitude of this, you see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this will be 0. 0.6. R wave is 0. 0.6. But that is not the only thing. There is a negative wave here as well. That comes to around 0. 0.1. So ultimately, when you are measuring the QRS amplitude, when you say QRS amplitude, you are going to have to take both together. This is 0. 0.6. Right? So 0. 0.6 millivolt of R minus 0. 0.1 millivolt of S wave. So ultimately it comes to 0.5 millivolt. So it is positive. Positive 0.5 millivolt. So that is what it means. So the QRS amplitude here is 0.5 millivolt. Right? And the duration is 2 divisions. So two, 2 small box means 0 0.04 and 0 0.04 and becomes 0 0.08 second. Right? So 1 millimeter, 1 millimeter. Right? So now this point over here is very important. At this point, the whole of the ventricle is depolarized and it's going to stay that way for a while. Right? So that is the importance of this point over here. It's called the J point. It's at the J point that the entire ventricle is polarized. Right? And it will be refracted to another impulse for that period. Right? until repolarization starts again. So that is the next part. Right? So this again is 1 to 2 division. So this is 2 to 3 division. This is 2 to 3 division. This is 1 to 2 division. This is 1 to 2 division. So this is what we call the ST segment. So this is a segment. This is also a segment. This is the interval. So this is the ST segment. You got it? Right? So this is when things remain isoelectric. Right? The entire ventricle after depolarization remains polarized and will be refracted. You know, heart has a long refractive period. Right? So now, if, for example, there is an injury, right? Ischemia, right? So in ischemia resulted in an infarction, right? So that tissue is dead, right? The membrane is damaged, tissue is dead, there will be leakage of current, and based on that, a current of injury is going to happen, resulting in changes in this. There will be an ST elevation or depression. So if such changes are there in the ST segment at this point when no electrical activity should be there, that means there is likely a current of injury. Yeah, so that would be in cases like a cardiac infarction. Right, so you understand that? Right, so that is what happens, that is the importance of the ST segment. Right, okay. So. Uh, Next is repolarization. So I had mentioned earlier how in repolarization the directionality changes. It's no longer from the endocardium to epicardium like we would expect. Right? Instead it will be from epicardium to endocardium. Right? So this general direction would be towards this. Right? So the apex remains positive at this point compared to the other parts. And finally what happens is the current direction will be like this during repolarization, right? So that is why over here repolarization is coming as a positive, all right? Okay. So I had mentioned uh, an exception earlier, right? So that exception to that two to three division is your T wave, right? T wave kind of takes up uh, your one large box, or just less, less than one large box. That means 5, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And make it just less than that. And amplitude will be slightly more than 
P wave. Right? So P wave, the average I had mentioned to you was uh, 1 to 3. Right? Over here, it will be 2 to 3. Right? 2 to 3. So it will be between this. Like this can be anywhere between this. On an average, it will be somewhere here like this. Right? Over here, this will be between this 2 to 3. Right? So I'll take it somewhere over here like this. That is your T wave. Got it? Yes? Okay. So just to recap, the P wave, 1 to 3 divisions, amplitude, 2 to 3 divisions, duration. Right? This again, the PQ segment, 1 to 2 division. QRS complex, 1 to, sorry, 2 to 3 division. Amplitude, it can vary. Right? And this is ST segment, 1 to 2 division again. T wave, 1 large box, just less than that. And 2 to 3 divisions. Right? So that is your ECG, and you now understand how these deflections actually happen. Alright, so once you get a little practice, you look at a lot of ECG and see all these, then you will understand a lot of things.